All right. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Spilling Tea with the G's. This is episode number eight. We've been off for a few weeks, but we're pumped to be back. Again, I am Nick Galrakis, and my brother Steve Galrakis with us. Steve, go ahead and say hello. How's everybody doing today? We, we have some uh, wonderful guests with us, by the way, and uh, we'll, we're going to introduce them here in a moment. Wonderful, wonderful guests, and uh, we are super thrilled to have both of them on. Um, I, I, we're going to laugh. I think is really what this is going to come down to. Uh, but just a reminder to everybody, the whole purpose of Spilling Tea with the G is just to talk about different things going on in the adolescent young adult cancer community. Uh, and just to let people know what else is out there, who else is out there. You know, this isn't just elephants and tea. This is a herd, what we always say. Uh, there, there's a awesome organizations, awesome individuals, two of which are on with us today. So we just want to open people's eyes and minds to what else is going on out there as far as the AYA cancer community is concerned. So let's jump right in and have some fun. So with us today, I, I just can't get over the outfits. Steve, we dropped the ball. We're just in t-shirts. Actually, no, you have a collar on, Steve, but um, we have, no, you don't. But Alexa Jet and Meg's Chase, welcome. How are you two doing today? Awesome. So excited to be here. So awesome. excited. In fact, I'm actually really happy since Megs and I want to put Ellen out of business. And I'm excited because we have a celebrity guest, Drake. So thanks for saving us a lot of money. Oh my God. <laughs> what just happened? I, I, <laughs> I'm going home. Um, there's a, okay. I'm just there's, a fo there's a photo of my brother, Nick, where he looks identical to Drake for, if, for, for no one who knows that story. So yeah, it's out there. <laughs> We'll have to post it one day. Can he TV, rap right? identical to Drake, though? Oh, yeah. You're not going to get He can me to sing, rap. though. He can sing. Yeah. Oh. That, that is a secret of mine. I was actually in show choir growing up. Get so. out of town! And did, the worm, and did the worm across the stage. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Video. This, is, this <laughs> is some tea spilling already. Right? <laughs> Damn it. This was not how this was supposed to go. This is... <laughs> This is not the Nick Galrakis roasting hour. No, there. I think there is video, Meg, somewhere. I know there's a photo of me doing the worm, which I, for those that have seen somebody do the worm, if you catch them in the wrong moment, it really looks awkward. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I was a big, I was a big offensive lineman in show choir. So that was, that was very, yeah, it was fun. It was a good time. But enough about me and my show choir days. We can reminisce about that at happy hour on Friday which I have a sneaky suspicion you two are gonna embarrass the hell out of me come Friday. Uh, let, <laughs> let's, let's just kind of go around real quick. You know, Megs, we'll start with you. You know, just tell us a little about yourself, who you are, where you're from, all, all the good stuff for the people out there listening, they can know a little bit more about you. Okay, well, my full first name is Megan Claire, um, but I'm known on social media as Warrior Megzy or Megs, um, and I am a four-year breast cancer survivor, stage 2A invasive lobular, and I'm in Dunwoody, Georgia, which is a suburb of Atlanta, and I also um, have a blog, Life on the Cancer Train. <laughs> awesome, and it's an awesome blog, so check it out. All right. <laughs> Miss Alexa Jett, go ahead and introduce yourself, please. Hi, friends, old and new. And if I know you, I'm so happy you're here. And if you're new, let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Alexa Jett. I'm from Palestine, Texas. I was diagnosed with papillary thyroid cancer at the age of 25 in 2017. I got involved in advocacy because I was the youngest person in the waiting room since I was treated on the adult side. So I just jumped right in when I went to my first AYA conference. I ran a blog called My Broken Butterfly in reference to the thyroid gland and I obviously am very active on social media as well. Awesome. Thank you, ladies. So that's a little about yourselves, you know, and Alexi you already hinted a little bit it's as far as social media, which we'll get into in a little bit more here in a second. Uh, as part of the big topic today, just want to kind of dive in because I think I actually knew both of you from your social media, specifically Twitter accounts, before we I even knew you both in person. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, I'll never forget, Megs, when you joined uh, the happy hour, I was like, wait, Warrior Megzy. I know Warrior Megzy. Ah! Um, so, you know, <laughs> it's a right small world. Uh, but it just goes to show you how important what both of you do on social media. So before we dive into the social media piece, 
Why don't you tell a little bit about, to, about people about what you guys do in as far as the cancer community right now, right? Obviously your blogs, but is there other things that you do from an advocacy standpoint, support standpoint, whatever you want to share? Alexa, we'll start with you this time. Sure. So actually, I've been working all week on Capitol Hill legislation advocacy, which is something I had wanted to do. I've done um, advocacy in the academic space, either participating, talking with academics, or actually going to talk to people at some of my local universities. Um, which has been really great. And a big thing that I'm into is supportive advocacy as well. And I think to be an advocate, you have to listen probably more than what you speak. So being out just in the community helps me as an advocate a lot. Awesome. Very cool. Ms. Meggs. Um, so aside from my blog, I am also in the research space as well. Um, I have written an abstract and presented at the uh, American Psychosocial Oncology Society, uh, which was really huge, especially as a patient, to actually be up there in front of the medical community, which is such a rare space for patients to have a spotlight. Um, and also, too, uh, like Alexa said, it is so important to listen. So I'm constantly engaging with people who either write to me from my blog or see me on social media. And I also am working on some videos for Teen America for their Fireside Fridays, which I'm super excited uh, about. Yes! Um, and gosh, I feel like I know I've done so much. And I, I've written, I've done a lot of guest blogs for other publications, um, such as I Had Cancer, uh, Humor Beats Cancer, um, Wildfire Magazine. So, I'm always doing something, and also my blog is syndicated on Cancer Health Magazine, um, their website as well, and I'm also a freelance writer with them. Awesome. You two are very busy individuals. My goodness. Uh, obviously, Megs, we can relate to uh, our side with the blogs and everything and all the writing you've been doing. Alexa, I'm not sure if you knew this, but we've, uh, our family, I mean, Mama G specifically, if you didn't know this already, she is Miss Marcha in Congress. So uh, she usually goes every year, Steve? So yeah, so, well, um, we typically go, um, I've gone about 75% as much as she's gone, but um, every year in September, we usually go for, uh, it's the Childhood Cancer Walk on the Mall. Um, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a pretty, um, it's a reality well, check. I it's bet. A reality check. As you can imagine, being, being an adult cancer patient and going there and seeing kids, you're just kind of like, oh, okay. Well, it's not so bad. All right. <laughs> mm. so, yeah, what sorry. doesn't Mama G do? <laughs> she's incredible. She's a, she's a superwoman. She really she's is. She's right cancer. now downstairs. <laughs> yeah, and then she's, she's babysitting my child, too, on top of it. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm actually sitting, and we're, Steve and I are actually in the same house today. Uh, we're not, I'm not in my office. Like, I usually have the massive orange background wall. Um, yeah, well, I know. She and she officially did finally get her full on yoga instructing license. What last week, Steve, or two weeks ago? Well, she she's had it, but she got she got an even f further certification last oh. week. Wow, I know nothing. So yeah, so she's you know. We, I was going to say, uh, Alexa, you know, there's uh, something that you and Megs. First of all, thank you both for all that you do in the in the cancer community uh, to help you know our fellow friends out and family members. Um, but there's, the question I wanted to ask you, Alexa, was you, know, you alluded to how you've always wanted to do political advocacy. And um, how did you get into that? How did you get into the political advocacy side of those things there? Actually, that's a great question. So I am not the first advocate in my family. Uh, my grandmother, she was the first advocate in our family. My uncle was born with a developmental disability and she spearheaded the programs in East Texas and Texas as a state to develop better programs, how we can reach people with developmental disabilities and even transition them into mainstream schools. And that made a humongous difference for my uncle Mike. So she had done a lot of political advocacy on the state level and I knew I wanted to do that with something and whenever I actually got cancer at the very young age of 25 
whenever I'd gone to my first AYA event, I looked at everyone in the room and I'm like, this is what I want to talk about. This is how I want to make change in the world. And when you see, when you see the faces and when you hear the stories, you, you know you have to do something. And plus, I, I talk a lot. I'm a fighter. And I know some people aren't. And so it's important of why it goes back to the listening of what Megs was talking about, why it's important to listen so you can represent their stories as well. Um, I do work currently right now with the NCCS, the National Coalition for Cancer Survivorship on their CPAT team. And I hope to get more involved in other um, political advocacy as well. That's, that's really awesome, Alexa, because there are, um, at least from my personal experience, there needs to be more patients of our age there um, as someone who has gone there many times to DC and to even, you know, state and local officials, you know, those fights tend to be made by parents like your grandmother, you know, who, um, you know, uh, have no one else to turn to and, 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 you know, uh, the system won't help them. And it's, um, it's always good when people who are actual patients can represent other patients who either don't want to fight, not fight, but, you know, it, it takes a lot to go and do more than just survive cancer, you know, to go, actually go and advocate for the grander community beyond yourself. It, it, it takes a lot. So I, I'm really happy that you've finally found that for yourself to be there. That's really awesome. Thank you. And to segue over to, to Meg's a question or a comment for you, you had, and Alexa was alluding to it on, on listening to people's stories, right? So kind of what for you, Meg's, when you started writing your blog, I, I think you, I saw a post from you today actually on social media. Have, did you ever anticipate people responding to you and from a writing standpoint and how your writing impacts them? Because I know that that's something that just is, yeah, go ahead, I'm sorry. And that, you know, I'm floored every time um, because when I started my blog, like I'm a talker and I'm always having something Wait, to you say. Are? Are you I know, sure? right? You know, I'm, just, I'm shy, I'm really shy. <laughs> um, but after, I moved into post-treatment, I realized, oh my gosh, this was so big. I couldn't talk about it because it was just so much and I was so emotional. So I was like, you know what? I've always been a writer. I've always done journals, have 24 journals actually now um, here at home. And I was like, I'm just gonna start a blog to just get these feelings out. And I was like, I'm just gonna post it. If, they, if one other person reads it, great. And then it just kind of took a life of its own. But I think the reason why people reach out to me because it, you know, it's through my blog or they'll reach out to me and send me, you know, uh, direct messages or IMs is because I come from a really authentic place and I'm talking about subjects that are really difficult to talk about, especially for AYAs. And I feel like in some ways, maybe my writing has helped let them know that they're not alone and I think they can sense that. Um, so it's really been, it's like, it, it's, it's so humbling, but it also lets me know that I'm, I am here for a purpose and it gives me purpose knowing that I could possibly be helping another person each time I write. Very cool. Very cool. That's, thank you for sharing that. So, you know, I, I'm, I have so many questions to ask both of you, but I want to be mindful that I want to dive into the social media side of things. And I think that a lot of the stuff that both of you just talked about really plays into the social media side, right? So yes. let's just go right into it. Um, we, we, we talked before this call, before the recording started a little bit about how social media has become an outlet, if you will, for patients, people that are just in treatment, people that are survivors, trying to figure out remission, all that. Emotions can be very raw, as I think the three of you can relate to a lot. Social media can be helpful. Social media can be lonely. Social media can be a scary place. Yeah. So for, for, for both of you, uh, oh, what is it? Oh, hi, Alexa and Warrior Megzi, right? Yes. Uh, for, for both of you, those are Twitter handles, go check them out. Uh, but for both of you being on social media, when you first went on to social media, what was your experience like? You know, where, how did you feel? Did you feel lost? Did you immediately find a group of people? You know, uh, just kind of talk us through the emotions of when you first got on social media to talk about your cancer. 
and I'll throw it to Alexa first. Okay, sure. Um, when you I, both were stalling. <laughs> <laughs> I actually was just waiting to hear Mexi since she's done it longer than I have. I was going to compare notes. <laughs> <laughs> But actually, I would say from my personal experience, first, the first time I got on social media and started talking about something as personal as my cancer experience, I wasn't talking about um, if I liked Philadelphia or Pittsburgh better. I wasn't talking about uh, what type of food I like better. I was talking about something very, very personal that to me and sharing things like Meg's nose. When you talk about side effects and potential fertility issues and things like that it can be pretty harrowing and when you don't have much of a following you're kind of just shouting it out in the void and you don't know if you're helping people yet or if you don't know if if it's really helping you and it takes some time to figure out you know do i want to keep doing this do i not and then i think you find your groove eventually yeah, I, I totally agree with uh, what Alexa is saying. So for me, I was very open with my uh, journey, and I really hate that word journey, I like to say path maybe, um, on my personal social media. But then I realized, okay, I wanted to talk more about the nitty gritty stuff and not really scare everyone else and let them know like even more details of how gory um, sometimes cancer and the treatments and the side effects can be. So I sought out some um, support groups on social media and some of them, you know, like you said, Nick, some were really very, I would say, judgmental. Like you would say something and then they would judge you. And I'm like, wait a second, aren't we here for support? So I really learned how to speak up for myself at that point. And then I was like, you know what, I'm going to just get out of this group. So that kind of, that was one of my first experiences in the support group was having that, that judgment. And I was like, Ooh, that kind of made me step away and wonder, should I try another one? And then I did. Cause I was like, I can't let that one experience hold me back. Cause I was like, I still need support. I need people to talk to. And, um, and then it turned out that um, I started joining more groups and mainly just kind of listened for a while before I actually started um, sending messages and posting about things just to kind of see what the what that group was like. And some are um, AYAs, some it's a mix of AYAs and older, you know, so and some are co-ed, some aren't. Uh, but I really like I just knew I had to say something and I needed information too because I was going through a lot of different surgeries that I had no clue about and I did ultimately find the support but I've also found with the social media that you know some others may be shy and don't want to join in but then when I like mention it and I'm like yeah I've been in there they're great they're a great group of people that kind of draws people in because we're like okay if, if Meg Z says, you know, that these people are, are okay or this organization's okay, it kind of lets them know that they can still, they can be themselves because I wouldn't just be part of a group where I couldn't be myself. Meg, can I actually ask you a question, a follow-up question of something you just said? I wanted to know if you and I maybe shared some similar experiences. You talked a little bit about the judgmentalness, which is definitely there. I can relate to that. Have you experienced in some areas, and def definitely not the happy hour at Elephants and Tea, which you should join, <laughs> some, in some areas of the cancer community as a whole, there's some clickiness and our established groups. Have you experienced that too? Absolutely. <laughs> Yes. And I'm just like, are we in high school? Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's unfortunate. And, you know, you just have to keep telling yourself, this is what I'm here for. And, and also have that power to be like, you know what, if this isn't a right fit, then I'm going to find something else and then find it, you know, because at the end of the day, if you need support, you've got to put your best foot forward and find it until you find your right fit, because it doesn't mean that you have to be part of 10 million groups, because that could be overwhelming, you know, for some people. So and that's part of the reason hard. why I wanted to ask you that is, have you and I talked about this in the friend and no, we haven't. So I wanted to prove, yeah, no, we haven't. I wanted to prove that um, some of the bad experiences can be similar 
but Megzi and I can both tell you there, that there is a lot of great support out there. So if you don't hit on the first shot, even the second or the third, keep going, keep trying. I promise you, you will hit good people. I promise. And more importantly, off of that is if you're shy, because some people are more vocal, but if you're shy, that is okay. Because Sometimes just listening and hearing others and just knowing there are others, you know, you can speak when you're ready. You know, you can post when you are ready. So don't, like, I'm, I really want other AYAs to not have that pressure of like, oh my God, I have to say something. Um, do it when you're ready, but just know that there really is support. And the best part is, so many of us have become friends outside of these groups. And like, if we're not, if they don't see us posting, you know, for a few weeks or something, they'll check in and be like, hey, what's going on? We miss you, are you okay? And to know that people that I haven't actually met in person, but you know, online care and are wondering where I am, like that is so huge, especially when you can feel so alone in what you're going through. Um, go ahead, Steve. And real quick, Alexa, thank you for my follow-up question. That was fantastic. Well, I, I, I think I, I was going to say, if one of us ever can't be on the show, we should just have these two fill in for us. I tell you, let me sit back. Go ahead, Steve. Um, no, so one thing that you both uh, talked about, and Meg, uh, Megs, you said there at the end, being ready to post. Um, and now, Alexa, your question actually plays into, plays into my question so well here. So thank you so much for the lead up. <laughs> um, you know, obviously, writing about any kind of health thing, especially cancer or the experience we go through are very personal. And sometimes we go through things during those treatments or the life around it that isn't always the best thing to share with the outer world. And so I guess my question to you two is, and we'll start with uh, Miss Alexis and she asked the last question, um, is, you know, how did you, or how was some of the things you said received and um, some of the more, you know, so for those of you who don't know, I wrote an article on mental health and drug addiction, and obviously was scared out of my mind to see how the wider public would receive that. Um, you know, were you guys hesitant to write about certain things at first when it comes to your health? And when you did write about those things, I guess, how did you feel received in the community and at well large? Well, Steve, I think that this is so interesting because I've actually talked to a lot of people about your article and I have used that as a barometer to make me more brave in the community. So thank you. Thank you for, for writing that article. It was exactly what people needed to hear. It was a subject not talked about. And I have heard other people talk about, I've experienced drug addiction problems too. And I'm talking about because Steven's talking about it. So I want to say thank you on behalf of the whole AYA cancer community for being brave about that. So my second thing is that I feed off other people's bravery and I know people feed off of mine and it's important that when you are a part of a community, Stephen, I feel like I fed off some of your bravery and I feed off of Meg's bravery. And so I hope that someone else can feed off of me. And I think it is important to be brave and put yourself out there if you're ready and if you understand um, some of the negatives that could potentially happen, but I do think the benefits far outweigh the risk. I think helping even just one person is enough for me. Absolutely, um, Alexa. So one of the things I was scared to write about um, was my cancer experience and also being um, a black person. And I was really scared to talk about racism and, and cancer. Um, and I was like, you know, it was too important for me to not say something. So I really was very thoughtful in how I was writing it. And I remember when um, I read it to my mother, because um, certain, certain posts I'll write, I'll read to her. And she was worried for me as well. She was like, I don't want anyone hurting my child. Uh, you know, you getting these horrible comments. And I said, you know what? It's just too important of a, a topic for me to stay quiet. And I just have to prepare myself, embrace myself, which already being black prepares me for already because I'm used to kind of hate, I guess. Um, and when I posted it a few weeks ago, the, I was so scared, but the reaction, the love, the support, people saying, oh my gosh, I never thought of it that way. I gave them a new perspective. Um, 
it was huge and it really let me know, okay, I really can talk about anything because it's coming from an authentic place and I'm not judging others. I'm literally just talking about my experience. And so I, I learned to just always stay authentic. And if I feel it's so important that I must share it, then I do. And I just brace myself. But luckily, um, I've only had a couple of those issues where someone, you know, snapped back and it was really uncalled for. And I just told myself, you know what, just think of the other people that you're reaching. That's how I have to view it. Oh, that was going to be my follow. I'll start go ahead, Steve. Oh, no, that was it. <laughs> So my, my follow-up to both of you was going to be exactly that, Max, was have you gotten negative, you know, borderline BS comments from people for just being authentic or even almost told like, hey, chill out, okay? You know, have, have you guys had any of those experiences? And I've seen the head nod, so I'm assuming yes. So, Megs, go ahead. I'm going to start uh. with you on that end. In fact, I got, <laughs> I got one the other day. It's like, I am very sensitive to those who are stage four. And I had written a post and someone retweeted it saying, oh my gosh, can you imagine you are single and you don't have children and blah, blah, blah. And a person who has stage four wrote back, well, no, that's not the worst thing. It was so snappy, like I'm dying and she is in post-treatment. She doesn't know what it's really like. And I was like, okay, obviously that triggered you. And so I had to like step back and not, you know, say anything mean. <laughs> I was just like, not sure why I was called out, but just know you are cared for, you know? Like I have to realize that certain pieces that I write or things that I post, it possibly may trigger someone who is hurting. And so typically when they snap back like that, that's my mindset, what I'm thinking of. Um, it is hurtful. It does take me a minute because I'm human and I'm a sensitive soul. Like I literally am a cancer. My birthday is next Friday, July 3rd. Um, so that's weird. Yeah. Uh, so I'm sensitive, but I don't get as upset as I would have been probably even two years ago. Got it. Alexa, Alexa go ahead. So um, I definitely understand what Megs is saying as well. My philosophy has just been let go, let God. I put stuff out there. I, I let it do what it's going to do. I let it touch who it's going to touch. I understand um, even just being an AYA is controversial since some oncology groups or some doctors don't even recognize it as a group. So just even being an AYA is controversial enough. And then when you add thyroid cancer, which is another level of controversy, I just know I'm going to say something. I, I say what I feel and it's important to be authentic. I've gotten um, what my mom calls nasty grams, which are mean Instagram DMs. I've gotten uh, accusations that I'm a Twitter bot which was hilarious. Yes, that I was, I was a Twitter bot. And um, it was because my name's Alexa that I was connected to Amazon Echo and- Oh my uh, gosh. Wow. Uh, yes, very, very immature, but- So I we, think we that, can't call you Echo during happy hours that that's frowned upon? You know uh, what, Nick? Actually, you keep remember you keep forgetting that I actually met you before you met me on social media. I met you at the uh, Indian Anderson right. AYA, AYA conference. And yep. you know what I did to help you remember my name? I said it's Alexa, just like Amazon Echo. I've tried to use that to my advantage. All right, continue. I'll shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think one of the things is just if your heart's in this for the right reasons, and you'll get over it. And, and I hate to put it that way, but I think the way Meg says it, let yourself be in your feelings for a little bit. You'll get over it and know what you're going to get back to work. That's so well said by both of you and I'm, I'm having those issues come up. Um, yeah, because, you know, I was, I know how vocal both of you can be in a, in a, all, and it's all in good ways, right? So I'm always curious. I feel like people that are most vocal always get some sort of backlash, whether it's Right. <laughs> just, just because, right? I think it's just, that's one of the nasty things about social media in general, right? Um, let me ask you both this. I have two kind of follow-up questions in regards to overall to social media. One, do you find yourselves right now interacting more with either Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, or other? 
what what are the what are the ones that you guys interact with the most and that you find is more is just a better fit for what you're doing? Alexa. Um, oh, Megs, go go. Oh, you got Megs. <laughs> Megs. I want to hear Megs. Go, Megs. Megs well, been here for longer, says Alexa. So we're gonna go with that. Well, it's funny because before it used to always just be on Facebook, but then last year um, I had pneumonia and I had just gotten sick. Like in February, I had shingles, and then in uh, March I had. Um, severe dehydration and vertigo and it ended up in the ER. And then oh, in May, I got pneumonia and I was like, oh my God, I have to just take some time off from work. And so I took that two months. And during that time, I never really um, done anything on Twitter, though I had an account. And I was like, you know what, let me see what this is all about. And it turns out there is a huge cancer community on Twitter. Um, and I mean, huge. And I have found more, I guess, opportunities for advocacy and um, writing and getting my blog out there on Twitter, uh, which really surprised me. And people are so engaging. And, um, but also too, I'm in a couple of different support groups on Facebook as well. So it's kind of like, kind of do both, but definitely heavier on the Twitter side. And my, and Instagram, I don't do, as much, I mean, I still post everything on there, but I'm definitely more active on Twitter, I would say. I'm going to echo exactly what Meg said. On Twitter, there is a humongous cancer community. I mean, we're talking all different types and all these different groups and all these different organizations. I have gotten most of my advocacy opportunities from Twitter specifically. The way I like to put it is Instagram is where you go when you meet your friends, but if you wanna meet new cancer friends, Twitter is definitely um, one of the best places you can do so. And another benefit is you can participate in tweet chats, which are incredible, like the AYA CSM, which I recommend any, any AYA yes. participate in. We would love to have you. It's a wonderful tweet chat led by um, Emily Drake, who's done all these amazing things for AYAs. And we talk about issues that are relevant to us. And there's people who are doctors, who are nurse practitioners, who are nurses, social workers, who join us too. And they really just want to hear what you have to say. It's, it's not a judgmental thing. They just want to know. And that's great. And I will plug Megsy's Instagram because her cat, Nady, is my nephew. And that's <laughs> where I can get a solid stream of Nady pics. That is true, Nathan. Nady. Exactly. Yes, yeah, my little Nady. Uh, that's my baby. Uh, that's my son. Um, but um, going off what Alexa just said with the tweet chats that with Twitter, you're really able to, your reach is so much greater as a, a patient and speaking on, you know, behalf of the AYA community and really getting like your, your thoughts and suggestions out there because so many doctors are following you or are seeing your um, posts or are on these tweet chats and it's like international. So it's, it's really amazing the organizations and the medical community that will like follow what we're saying, especially in this tweet chats, which is really important. And then sometimes, you know, it'll, someone will see one of your posts and they'll mention it to another doctor and all of a sudden it becomes this huge like med Twitter, you know, Red, which is amazing and it takes a life of its own and you're getting all this great feedback or questions saying hey can you explain this a little bit more why you know why did why did you feel that way you know what can we do better and to have that kind of platform is amazing i was going to say that and actually real quick too the aya csm that, that alexa brought up it, that it stands for aya cancer societal movement uh, for those that haven't heard of it. And I echo, I've been on those chats, they're fantastic. To, but to both of your comments about the medical professionals, I don't, in my opinion as well, Twitter is the place where they're on. They are not on any other social media. So to actually have a voice towards the medical professional side of the world, Twitter is definitely the place to be. Yes. Um, it's interesting to hear both of you say that there's more of a community on Twitter than any other. Um, I know from an elephants and tea standpoint, and even some other organizations, I won't mention who because I don't want to put words in their mouth, but in having conversations with them, we have felt that we've actually, as an organization, have gotten 
more reaction from people on Instagram and Facebook recently than Twitter. Um, so it just, it, it's, it's just interesting for me to kind of go back and look at it like, okay, what are we missing from an elephants and teeth standpoint? It seems like the individuals are more on Twitter though than the organizations, if that makes any kind of yeah. sense at all. Um, cool, very interesting. And the Twitter chats, you know, I'm glad you both brought them up that I think those are extremely important for any patient or survivor that's going through it, that how, how cool it is to see the conversation from so many different people uh, on a specific topic that may be relevant to someone, um, regardless of where they're at, and really regardless of age too, um, which kind of leads me into my other comment or other question for you guys. How important is it when you're on social media to try to find people that are either similar in age to what you, who, who you are or similar in diagnoses uh, type of cancer that you have? Or does it even matter at that point? Um, kind of curious to see what you guys think on that. Um, it doesn't matter so much to me. Um, as I just said to a group of my friends, I'm an equal opportunity lover. I, I love everybody. I love to meet new people. I love to, to do new things. Um, I, I love that. And so I think when you're in the cancer community, even if it's outside your age range, there is something you can connect on. And that's something my mom raised me with. Find that one thing, no matter whoever you meet, that you can connect on. And in the cancer community, you can connect on more than one thing. You can talk about doctors, nurses, your cancer center, where, wherever, or your treatment side effects or anything like that. There's always something to connect with someone on. And when you're in the cancer community, you already have that kind of ground level in with that person. So no, I'm open to anyone. I love to meet thyroid cancer survivors. I love to meet AYAs, but I also love to meet everyone else as well. Um, to piggyback off of that, um, I always like when I'm writing or I post or I have an idea, I'm always coming from a single childless person's point of view. And, but even like when I write about that, I have people who are married, who, you know, are gay, transgender, whatever, which is amazing, find something, you know, that they can pull from. And when I think in the cancer community, it really doesn't matter your age, it doesn't matter your sexual orientation, it doesn't matter any of that because at the end of the day, we all have cancer and there's some common ground somewhere that you can find. And I think it's really important that people remain open. And I know a lot of people have always been surprised that I know about a lot of other different cancers and not just breast cancer. And there are a lot of different breast cancers too. Um, but like I know about blood cancer, you know, and um, I'm learning about like um, colon cancer because I feel it's important for me to know what's going on in other cancers because maybe what they're doing might end up impacting my cancer and future treatments because being AYAs, we're definitely at risk to get another cancer, um, you know, within either that five years or, you know, two years, whatever, it's we always feel that shoe's going to drop on us. So I think it's always important to learn as much as I can and not just stay focused in just my answer because at the end, we really are all a community and we just want that support. Well said, both of you. I think that very well said. <laughs> so just to kind of wrap up the social media part of this interview here, the, what would you say, you know, I, I, I think I have the takeaways here, but let me know if you, if you agree or want to add anything, because if someone is new, right, that hits social media, it's well, number one, it's okay to just listen and not like kind of speak up just yet. If you want to speak up, by all means, go right ahead, but it's okay to listen. Um, and, and really Twitter is a, a bigger play, play is a bad word, but bigger area for connecting with other cancer patients than I ever thought. But for, I think for most people, like, hey, get on Twitter if you actually want to connect with other people. Um, and also, too, if you're looking for advocacy opportunities, Twitter is also the place to go as well. Um, what else would you, would you both add to that that I may have left off for a new, new person that wants to jump on social media? Well, Nick, I actually think it's sort of what you know, you and Steven both know, 
since you guys are, this is sort of your family business, it's all about relationships. Yeah. And the thing is, like when I talked to you on the phone one time and you told me about Camilla being pregnant with Tessie and um, it was a thing where we guessed the gender and I got it right. But the fact that I felt like I was involved in that experience and I feel like even with Stephen more recently that I have such a good relationship with all three of you, I think this all boils down to relationships so be sure when you're on Twitter that you're connecting with other people and not just self-promoting. Be sure to connect and make friends. Do the golden rule. Be kind, be courteous, and, and listen to. I think that's very important. And I would also add that if you are shy, just because I've come across a lot of um, people who are shy, it's okay to reach out to us. You can. DM us, you know, say hello, because like Alexa was saying, it is about the relationship and feeling like you can talk to someone because I think sometimes once they have that initial connection, then it helps them take that next step to be a little more vocal. Um, and, and Steven, I really want to get to know you more on a deeper level. Um, you know, but it's just been so great as far as like the community that you really can build, like just be open to it because I've discovered that people truly do care once they get to know you. So put your personality in it. Like anytime, like I'm posting and it's not always about cancer either because people get to know my personality, my personality, like they know I'm going to show up in something with bling on because that's my personality. And then people gravitate to your writing and then your advocacy or whatever it is you want to do in your cancer, you know, on your cancer path, you know, but just be yourself and just know that that is enough. It really is. And be a hundred percent yourself. And I'll, I'll list me and Megs as an example. We're very similar, but we're still different in a lot of ways. And when we get together, I think we're even better together than we are just separately because we do have those differences. Yes, I love you, girl. <laughs> but I think one of the things is be yourself. Don't be a Megs. Don't be an Alexa. Be truly yourself because that's how you stand out. It's, it's not, well, we need so many of this, or we need another the cancer patient, or we need another this person. But be yourself because there's space for you. And I watched a documentary on Netflix and a quote, it was, it was about cancer. And the most important gift you can share is your story, the gift of your story. And that's what I think it boils down to is have a personality and just be yourself. Yes. Very cool. Thank you both for that. Uh, so last question for you both. Uh, as you know, elephants and tea are, are one of our sayings is cancer is the elephant in the room that no one wants to talk about. So for both of you, we ask all of our people that we interview here, uh, what is your elephant in the room when it comes to cancer? So who wants to go first? I want Megsy to go first. You always want Megsy to go first. Because I like, I'm a fan. I'm genuinely, she's my friend. She's a very good friend of mine. I'm genuinely a fan. And I just want to listen to what she has to say. I think we should get... I, I think we should get like Warrior Megzy fan, number one fan t-shirts. <laughs> what? Amazing. What? Yeah. Um, okay. So for me, it really is, it is very difficult for me to talk about being single and infertile. And I feel like it makes a lot of people uncomfortable when I bring in the, the single part and that I don't think I'm going to ever date again. Um, people just immediately say, well, you're gonna meet someone, you're gonna do that. And I'm just like, okay, these are my, this is my reality. I'm in pain 24 seven. I have chemo induced fibromyalgia, yay. Um, and neuropathy. So like, if it hurts to touch me, I'm certainly not gonna be able to be in a relationship. I can barely get up on a sidewalk without, you know, showing a facial expression of pain. Um, and so it makes people really uncomfortable when I bring that up. But darn it, I'm gonna keep bringing it up because that is part of my story. I loved that. I was just listening. I was listening so intently. <laughs> I, I'm a viewer here with you as well. Just going, that is some good stuff. Um, 
So my elephant in the room is actually my diagnosis, and that is, of course, thyroid cancer. And I want to give you an example of someone who I met at Lacuna Loft. Um, I had kind of known this person, but I never knew what type of cancer they had. And she actually read my Elephants and Tea article where I clearly stated that I was a thyroid cancer survivor. She said, Alexa, are you really a thyroid cancer survivor? And I said, yes, I am. And I'm very out and proud about that. And she said, I am too. And that, for me, the reason why that's such a topic we don't talk about is because sometimes in the cancer space, people have misconceptions about thyroid cancer, and there's a lot of things about that. And so I also, that is, I guess, my elephant in the room of we should have everyone be comfortable enough to share their diagnosis, no matter what the stage, no matter what the cancer. And so it is my hope that everyone would be proud to say that they're a thyroid cancer survivor. Got it. Thank you both for sharing those. And first, you know, to Mags, yours with the, the infertility and being single and everything that you're going through, you know, I, I think that that is clearly a conversation that, ever, as you said, most people kind of just sit there and they probably freeze, right? They really don't yes. know what to say, right? Yes. <laughs> you know, I, and the, I think the infertility conversation, we've heard that from a couple people now on the video casts as far as their elephant in the room. Uh, clearly things need to change on that, that topic for sure. Uh, but then, like you said, you add in the, the single side of things and, and that, what comes with that. And, you know, it, it, that's, that's, uh, that's who you are, right? So it's like, whether, whether it's that person likes it, who hears it or not, it's like tough. This is my story. This is where I'm at. And this is where I'm going. So, and I think part of the problem is she's such a great person and great to be correct. around her. You're, you're like, why? Why? Like you don't, like, I think people are like, uh, of course she is. Of course she's going to find him. I, I think that is also just being in the community and seeing people talk to Megs too. It's just, she's a great person to be around. You always want to be around her. So, Alexa, I'm just going to put you in my pocket and just carry you everywhere. Thank she should you. Be your, she should be your PR person, Megs. Totes. And I'll, I'll be yours. <laughs> oh, thank you. Personal cheerleader. Oh my God, I was a cheerleader. Oh boy. That was There's, with the gloves. That was beautiful. That, that, the, the form is still there, right? It is. It was like it's riding like, a bike. She was just, just, she's cocked and loaded, ready to go. Muscle memory was all good to go. Oh, we're going to have some fun on Friday. Um, you know, Alexa, to, to your elephant in the room with the thyroid cancer. And to be perfectly honest, I was ignorant from the standpoint of other people not really considering it a cancer. I always thought it was a cancer in everybody's right. eye. And, you know, there was a certain presentation, we won't mention where it was and all that, that I kind of just sat there and I was like, where is this going? Um, you know, and I think that it's, it's almost as it's, a, it, to me, it was, it's like the same thing to telling someone, oh, you have an easy cancer or something like that. And it's like, you know what, piss off, bro. Um, or, and, and I just, was just so baffled um, at the way it was said. I was just kind of, I remember just sitting there and just kind of going, wait, was that just, did that just, what? Like, really? Did I hear that correctly? Did I hear that right? And, and you know, um, so for someone that has or had thyroid cancer, I can only imagine your feelings with that too. I, I mean, I mean you, you, you've vented them as now, and I know you have vented them in other places too, uh, and rightfully so. Definitely. Um, you know, so it was, it's just very interesting, the, whatever the conversation is right now, why it's being categorized by some people the way it's being categorized. Right. Um, I, it, it's difficult to understand. It has cancer in the name. It is cancer. And I'm actually not even in ED. Uh, people think you get the thyroid out and you're done. And I'm at this point, I, my tumor marker was positive. So I'm not even in ED anymore. And I had my surgery three years ago. So there's a lot of misconceptions, but you know what? We got to get to work. And that's my thing. I'm so committed to working and figuring this thing out. And as long as there's someone who needs that attitude corrected, I'm willing to sit down and have a conversation with anyone. Awesome. Awesome. You both rock so much. <laughs> I tell you, you know, we could keep going all day and we probably will when we actually stop the recording, but no, uh, right? you know, uh, you know, first of all, thank you both for sharing your elephants in the room as well. I think that both those conversations are so important. Uh, and, and just so 
while other people know or can be in your shoes to a certain extent, right? Like your, each of your stories are all both unique. You know, everyone's story is unique. And I think you kind of mentioned that too of on the social media side of it too, just tying everything together that be you, don't be an Alexa, don't be a Meg, don't be a Steve, don't be a Nick. You know, when you want to speak up, speak up. When you want to sit back, sit back. And that's okay uh, in, in every aspect of what we do. And, you know, just to my, my closing thought, if you will, with everything that you've all mentioned, when someone comes to us at Elephants and Tea and wants to write their story, I tell them, you know, go ahead and write what, what you want to write, but don't be shocked if it comes out completely different than how you anticipated it being. And I would, I'd venture to say 75% of the people that have never written before, that's exactly what happens. Or some people will write and they go, you know what, Nick, I just, I'm emotionally not ready to put this out there yet. And that's okay, right? That's, it's the same thing with social media. It's okay to just kind of take a step back and, and, and just listen, like you both said. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Steve, go ahead. I was just going to, for my, for my closing remarks, I just wanted to say first, both thank you so much for being on today. It was an utter pleasure to see you at a different time during the week um, than, than Friday. Um, but also that, uh, you know, keep up what you're doing. Um, because, you know, when we think of the cancer community and the people who help, we tend to think of organizations. Yeah. At least, you know, some people tend to think of organizations and, and those, are the organiz those are the things that help the most, where in reality, it's the relationships with individuals that really do help you so much get through this terrible thing that is cancer during and after. Um, and I think people like you and you two especially um, are really, I don't even probably, probably don't want to use the word leaders, but you really are leaders of um, a group of people that never wanted to be together, never wanted to be in this community. And so for you to take that up on your own, to bear that burden, you know, to talk about that and kind of help people out is something that we need more of. And I hope you two just continue to do that and know that we're all behind you. You're making me cry, I've got mascara on. Oh, thank you. Okay, Megzi, I'll take it from you just one second. Um, I think I can speak for Megzi as well. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us on social media. And please, if you want to send us a DM or a message, if you're new, if you want someone to hype you up or can vouch for you, maybe retweet some of your tweets or something, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Please don't hesitate to reach out to Megs. We're here for you. We want to support you. We were there at one point too. So that's my closing. Thank you both so much. You good, Megs? You all right down there? I'm all right. Ah, Let's go hug Mamie, you. will you? No. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, both of you, thank you so much. And thank you both for dressing up for the occasion with spilling tea. I, I just got to say, you guys well, killed is, it. You killed it. This is yeah. normal. I, I wear this That out. is normal for her. Yeah. No, <laughs> say, we know it's normal. You know, I, I expected Alexa to have some sort of background, and she just she held up to that thought. Um, I, I, it's just perfect. So both of you are perfect. Thank you both so much for being with us today. Um, so for, for those that want to tune in next week, uh, so we have, we're going to have two more episodes left for this, our, for our first season, I guess you can call it for Spilling Tea with the G's. And we're going to take a break through the summer, come back in the fall, even though I guess it is technically summer still. Uh, next week will be Haley Johnston, who started a AYA group called Escape for the LGBTQIA plus uh, group. So do you want to check that out? Haley is fantastic individual. Um, super thrilled that she, she wants to come on and chat with us and spill tea with us. So that'll be fun. And then the last episode uh, will be Mama G, will be Angie. Uh, we decided to have her on. Steve pushed for it. And I said, yeah, we probably need to have mom on to either end this season or start next season. So we decided let's, let's end the first season on a high note with, with Angie G on with us. So, so yeah, so tune in next week. So again, Alexa, Megs, Oh, hey, Alexa and Warrior Megzi. Oh, oh, hi. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. oh come on. Oh, hi. I like was Ohio. Ohio. I know. We even talked about this last week. I blew yeah, it. we toasted. Oh, <laughs> uh, I had it. I had the clothes. It was great. All right. Well, I'm just going to show Nick, you. Nick, hang up before you embarrass yourself. I know. <laughs> Thank you both so much. We appreciate you. you Thank you. Uh, and everybody have a great, wonderful day. Take care. <laughs>